So picture this. You're working on a project for a client. You need rocks in the scene, but you don't want to waste time making your own rock texture. Lucky for you, there are lots of great and often free resources for high quality textures. That's great. What's not so great is that everyone uses these textures, and if you use them as is, then you run the risk of your work starting to look like everybody else's. But it doesn't have to be that way, because in this tutorial, I'm going to show you five simple and quick ways to make these textures your own. Let's get to it. So first, I'm just going to quickly go over the uh, scene that I'm starting with here. If you'd like to start with the same scene, there's a download link in the description, but it's not required if you'd like to follow along with your own setup. So in my scene here, I have a cube with a grid texture applied to it. I also have geometry that I was split into five slices. I have a push apart effector that I'm using to push the slices apart, make them more obvious. And I have a dome light uh, with a pro render HDRI that I'm using for the basic lighting of the scene. And I have a camera that I'm using for the overhead shot, which has a protection tag on it to prevent accidental movement. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my render view. So now I'm gonna talk about how I've set up the original uh, rock texture that I've downloaded. I have a material node, a color texture that I'm feeding into the diffuse color. I have an ambient occlusion texture that I'm feeding in as the color multiplier of the color. I have a roughness texture that I'm feeding into the reflection roughness, a normal map that I'm feeding into a bump map, and it's set to tangent space normal. And it's being fed into the bump input. And then I have a displacement map feeding into the displacement node and that into the displacement port of the output. And just as a quick reminder, if you're going to be using displacement, you need to apply redshift object tags to the geometry that you're using. Uh, and then go to the geometry tab and make sure that you also enable both tessellation and displacement. So now that we have our original material uh, set up, we're going to make a copy of that original material for our first variation, and we're going to call it color correct because that's the node we're going to be using to make the variation. And then we're going to apply that material to the first rock slice. And over in the shader graph, we're going to be adding a color correct node. And with that color correct node, we're going to be routing the output of the color texture into the input and route the output of the color correct to the material diffuse color. And the color correct node has a bunch of options uh, like gamma to make things lighter or darker. Uh, contrast does basically what it says. Uh, hue shift can change the color. Saturation scale. Uh, decreases or increases saturation. And level scale is another way of increasing or decreasing brightness. For this particular variation, I want to go for more of a granite look. So I'm going to increase the gamma to 1.5. I'm going to decrease the contrast to around 0 0.35. Uh, I'm not going to touch the hue shift. Saturation scale, I'm going to decrease to also around 0 0.35. And I'm going to adjust the level scale to around 0 0.6. So now we have more of a lighter, less contrasty granite look. Now for method two, we're going to make another copy of the original material and we're going to rename it to ramp because that's the node we're going to be using. And we're going to apply that material to rock slice two. And then we're going to add a ramp node to the shader graph, route the color texture into the input of the ramp and route that ramp out to the diffuse color. 
Now, most people, when they use a ramp, uh, are using it to increase or decrease contrast, um, like I'm showing here. But you can also use it to colorize uh, textures, much like you could in Photoshop with gradient with a gradient map. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to add an extra knot to the left and make it close to white. I'm going to adjust the other white knot and make it close to white, not pure white. And I'm going to make the black knot into more of a uh, sort of neutral blue. And then I'm going to slide the knots over to the left so I can get more detail coming through. And I'll take the right knot and slide it back over a little bit to the right. So we got a little bit more detail coming through and you end up with something that's a little bit more like an ice texture or something you might expect uh, to see in the tundra. Now for method three, we're going to create another copy of the original material. And we're gonna call it masking. I guess we're gonna be using ramp nodes to make a few different masks based upon the original texture that we have. So we're going to apply that material to Rock Slice 3. And we're going to add two ramp nodes to our shader graph. And we're going to be blending uh, some materials together. So we're going to be uh, adding a material blender. And then we're going to add two materials. And the first material we're going to reset we're going to set to a preset of gold and the second material will set to a preset of silver. And then we're going to take the uh, original color or the original material and make it the base layer of the material blender. We're going to take the gold material and make it layer color one. And we're going to take the uh, silver material and make it layer color two. And then let's route the material blender out to the surface. We won't see anything yet because we don't have our uh, mask created to blend the materials yet. And let's let route the original texture or the color texture out to the ramp. And then route that ramp to the output so we can see what we're doing. And the goal here is to kind of create uh, a mask with not too much white in it because we're just trying to uh, create a material that suggests that there's metal ore in the rock and not necessarily entirely dominated by the metal. So let's bring the white knot over to the left to increase the contrast. And then let's slide the knots over to the right until we find a good spot. Getting pretty close. Right there, where you don't have a whole lot of white in the mask, is pretty good. And then let's route that ramp into layer color one blend color. And then let's create our second mask by taking the color texture, routing it into our second ramp, and routing that ramp out to the output so we can see what we're doing again. We're going to bring the white knot over to the right again. And we're going to slide it along until we can see sort of a different uh, sort of white, a different area of white coming through because we don't want the silver and gold to overlap too much. And then to kind of control the white a little bit more, we're going to add another knot to the right of the white knot, make it black. And let's slide the knots until we find a good amount of, until we find the amount of white that we want and in the area that we want. Just experimenting here. So let's check our other ramp. And they seem to be kind of different, but they're sort of in the same area. So let's control uh, our first ramp with another knot in the same way we controlled our second ramp add extra black knot and let's slide it along to a different section of the ramp 
and we're just checking to make sure that they're not sharing the same area. That's not enough white, so let's adjust it. Check our second ramp. Slide over to the left. And now that we have it about where we want it, we're going to take the ramp and route it into layer color two, blend color two. And then we'll route the material blender out to our surface. And now we have a mixture of our three materials here. Um, but if you want to adjust them and have, perhaps have more or less metal in the texture, you can adjust your mass by adjusting the ramps. So you can kind of slide it along and see the effects. So here we're getting a little bit more gold into the material, which I kind of like. And then we can do the same thing for the silver. And now we have a rock that looks like it has some metal ore in it. And that's our third look. So to start off our fourth method here, uh, let's create a copy of the original again. And we're gonna be calling it mixing because we're gonna be mixing two different materials together that we've downloaded. So we'll apply this material to the fourth rock slice. And we're going to be mixing two different materials here. Uh, since I already have a physically based material set up here, I'm going to be reusing it, except for the displacement nodes. So I'm just going to highlight the nodes, hold down control and drag down to create copies of the setup. And I'm going to bring in Material Blender since we're going to be blending two different materials together. I'm going to route the original material into the base color of the Material Blender. And I'm going to route the other material into layer color one of the blend material. And then I'm going to route the material blender out to the surface, but we can't see anything yet because we don't have a mask to mix them together. So to create that, let's add a max on noise, not a regular noise because the max on noise is superior. And then let's add a ramp node to help us control the noise that we're going to be using. Uh, but before I move forward, I'm going to quickly replace all the textures for the second material setup with the ground texture that I've downloaded. I have the link for the texture down in the description, or it's also included with the project file if you downloaded it. So first I'm going to replace the ambient occlusion texture and select the ground ambient occlusion. And then I'm going to replace the color texture as well. Then the reflection uh, roughness map. Then the bump map. And now so that you can see what the uh, other material looks like, let's route that out to the surface. And you can see it's a very green uh, ground texture. Let's route the material blender out to the surface again. And let's route our noise into the ramp node to start creating our mask again. And we're going to change the noise to something more complex, like a Booyah noise. And to add the complexity even more, I'm going to increase the cycles to around six. And then let's route that ramp into blend color one of the material blender and route the material blender out to the surface. And now you can see the two materials mixed together. If you want to control how much of uh, the ground texture is showing, you can adjust the ramp. I'm making it more contrasty here to uh, kind of increase the detail. And I'm just sliding the knots right and left to show that you can adjust how much of each texture that you want in the new material. And I want more of a green look, so I'm going to put it over to the left so I get more of the mossy rock look. Now, last but not least, we come to method five. So let's make a copy of the original material again, and we're going to be renaming it to noise, and then applying that material to rock slice five. So over in our shader graph, we're going to be adding a max on noise.
and we're going to be using the maximum noise in a, a way that you probably haven't seen before, where we're going to be feeding the color texture in to the maximum noise itself, namely into the coordinate offset of the maximum noise. And uh, to kind of see what's going on here, let's route that out to the diffuse color of the material. And the first thing it's doing that you'll notice is it's remapping the colors to white and black because that's what the noise is, at, is being set to. But what's also doing is if I adjust the uh, scale here, and if I adjust the contrast, you can see that the texture is actually warping the noise itself. So we're getting a very different look that's still being influenced though by the original texture. And again, I kind of like a more complex noise for mixing naturalistic textures. Uh, so I'm going to change it to Booya, and I'm going to increase the scale again. So we can see more of the detail uh, and warping of the texture itself. I'm going to decrease the contrast to bring more detail back in. Now, if you don't like uh, the colors being remapped, what you can do is actually route the color texture into the noise again, but this time into color one input. And this brings in some of the original color of the original texture. Uh, and to make it a little bit more contrasty again, I'm going to change color two to something close to black. And I'm just going to play with the contrast here a little bit. Uh, if I bring the high clip down below the low clip, I can actually invert the colors a little bit, and I'm kind of liking that look. It's a little bit more of a volcanic rock look. And I'm going to increase the scale so I can bring some more of the detail back. And uh, with this kind of method, it takes a lot of playing around, but you can really make a drastically different material than what you started with. And one thing I kind of wanted to show you was that you can use the any of these methods, not just with the color texture, but to alter the other textures as well. Uh, namely, the reflection roughness texture can be altered in the same way. So to do this, I'm going to create a copy of the Maxon noise by control clicking and dragging. And I'm going to route the reflection roughness texture into the coordinate offset. And I'm gonna route that into the reflection roughness of the material and the reflections are pretty sharp and I don't quite want them to be that sharp. So I'm going to adjust it using a ramp node. So I'm gonna route the noise into the ramp node and route the ramp node out to the reflection roughness. And I'm just going to change the black knot to be more of a mid-gray or even close to white to really take, uh, or to really make the reflections a little bit more rough. And I'm even gonna try out here making the reflection, kind of inverting the reflection roughness map. I'm kind of like gonna look at scouting me, so I'm gonna go with that. And now we've ended up with something that's a little bit more of like a volcanic rock type uh, of look. So here are the five variations that we ended up with. Some nice things about uh, altering textures and the ways that I showed you is that you can combine the methods for almost endless variations. And they're also procedural as well, so it's easy to make changes as needed. If you like this video, you might also be interested in another tutorial I did using emission materials and fields to create an animated light installation. On the other hand, if you're interested in strengthening your design fundamentals, I'd recommend this video that guides you step by step through applying Gestalt principles. It's definitely the kind of video I wish I had when I was first starting. In any case, thanks for watching and see you next time.